Hello everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to paint this horse. So regardless of what it is that I'm painting, I always start off with painting my background first. I usually like to use my airbrush, but even if I was using traditional brushwork, I would still make sure that I got my background or the base colour, whatever background option you are going with, I'll always put that in initially. The reason being, if you then paint your subject on top, you're not going to have any halo edge effect around that subject at all. What can happen is if you then paint your subject first and you're trying to paint in your background around that, we're not able to quite get that right up to the subject without having to then paint over some of the details. It can then look like the, the subject is not part of that background and that it's two individual pieces, a bit like a, a sticker that's just been stuck on, which is really not what we're going for. So my preference has always been to paint in that background first and then put my subject on top. So because this was a painting for myself, I decided to go with a nice sharp blue background. The reason being, he's got blue eyes, he's also classed as a blue and white, and also all of his tack is blue. So he's got a nice blue bridle, and I knew then that I wanted to keep that theme running for this portrait of him. So there's a couple of reasons why you would want to choose a background. You always want to make sure as well that it complements that subject. Because he's going to have a lot of the blue and purple colours in the black sections of his mane and on the markings on his nose, a blue worked really well for that as well. And one thing that I'll quickly mention, because it's something that I get asked a lot on Patreon, is how I design my layouts. So what I did at the end of January is I created a designated video for that, showing you the software that I use and how I design the, the backgrounds for my pet portrait commissions. Now, like you can see in the thumbnail in the corner, I had three main colours that I went for on the layout here of Chico. I ended up going with the blue and also you can design your colour swatches. So if picking the exact colour that you're after is something that you find quite challenging and knowing where on the colour wheel that is, a colour swatch can really help with that. So if that kind of video is of interest, I'll link my Patreon in the description below. That's both live on the pastel and the acrylic tier. But designing this first on a computer can really help you to not only get a, an idea of what that painting's going to look like, but you might have an image in your head with the colour that you want to go for. It isn't until you then paint that that you think it doesn't quite look right and I should have gone with something else. That means that you're going to have to paint over that canvas and start again. If you design that on a computer first, you're going to com completely just cut out all of that process. So if you've watched a few of my videos on YouTube here, you'll know that I like to work in really small areas. The reason being, I find that if I get that to 80% complete and then I move on to the next, I'm far more motivated and it's a lot less daunting. Sometimes when we start these portraits, it's a little bit of, I don't know where to start. Maybe you've got something that's particularly complex or quite challenging. By breaking it up into small sections and then I then break it up into individual layers, it becomes far easier to tackle. Now this here is a prime example and all of this is available on real time on Patreon. But here, I didn't like how dark my base layer was. I didn't feel like I had enough contrast on this ear. So I put in my first layer of detail and I really didn't like it, so I painted over it. I then went in and again on top and added my highlights, my details. And because the base layer that I then repainted was a lot more darker, my details showed up that much more. Now, the one thing about the reference photo with Chico here is his, eye, his ears were really dark. Because of the light source here, the, the ears weren't actually catching any direct sunlight. So I wanted to make sure that I captured that because although here at the moment the ears look really dark, almost too dark, it's not until you're going to get the whole painting in and all of the face done that the ears then start to make sense because it then follows the rest of the light source. And light source is something that I speak about in all of the tutorials. It's really important. Where you put your highlights, where you put your shadows are really going to form the, the face and the structure of that animal, whatever it is that you're painting. So it's really important to really pay attention to that base layer stage and map them in as closely at that stage as you can. And here is a prime example. Now all of the face section here, he's got this strong white marking down the front but it doesn't look white for my very first base layer. I'm going in with some purples and some nice warm greys. The reason being, I'm gonna build up this fur from dark to light. White fur is never white. It's very reflective, very similar to black fur. So you're gonna be able to add a lot more color in that than you would think you would. So the color swatches, what I mentioned a few minutes ago, can work really well for identifying what colors and where on the color wheel you need to select to make the white fur here more realistic. 
And as I start to build up the layers here, these details, the darker base layers, they all start to come together. If I'd have made my base layers too bright, these light details that I'm working on now would not show up. I wouldn't therefore have the same degree of depth that I'm after. So with acrylics, because we have that real added benefit that once that layer is dry, you can just keep on re-layering, you don't ever get to the point where you fill the tooth of that canvas, you can just keep on building more depth the more layers that you add. And again, always following that light source. So the left part of his face is gonna be in shadow. So I'm gonna be using slightly darker grays there. And on the right side of his face, he's got more of those bright highlights. Now in the Patreon version, I really did experiment with a couple of different brushes. This here is a rake brush and it's not a brush that I use very often. However, I find that it worked really well with the scale that I was working on. This is a 12 by 16 that this brush worked perfectly for this really short but fine fur on the face. But I did use it in a specific way and again because the real time clip on Patreon is that much slower you're able to see how I'm using that brush. But the main thing with a rake brush if you are using them is to make sure that you slightly vary your hand placement and how you move that brush. The reason being because of how a rake brush is designed and how it's meant to be used if you continue using the same movement, you're just going to end up with very uniform details. It will then start to look like fake fur, which is obviously not what we're going for. I also found it was a bit of a fine balance on how much water you needed to use to thin that paint down to make this brush work effectively. And going back to what I mentioned with my base layers, you'll see that I did map in pretty much most of the white section of the face. But then once I did that, I've now broken it down into three chunks. I did the top section above the eye, the middle section, and then I will work on the bit that merges onto the nose. And I think that's quite important when you're working on a large area that's one solid colour like this white section. If I painted this all in one individual layer and then I did my next layer, I think it would be far easier to rush this process. And again, that's exactly what I did here on his forelock. Now, the one thing that I love about Chico, he is an amazing horse. I'm biased, of course, because he's mine, but um, he has such an impressive mane. It's really thick. It's really long. It's, it's past his shoulder. And he's also got a lot of thick feathers around his feet. So the mane here and the forelock, I really wanted to capture that in the painting. And the reference photo, I just managed to take it just at the right time. It was covering one of, you know, the left eye there, but it was really showing that thick lovely fur there's a lot of blue and purple colors in it too so i thought that this would be perfect for the tutorial on patreon on the top section here you've got more of your purple colors and then closer to the ear and then on the lower darker section i'm going to be sticking more with my cooler colors and using more of my blues and this color decision here is really important really study that photo whatever it is that you're working on really see where, whether or not you've got your warm colours or your cool colours because that kind of lighting and how you're showing that in your painting is going to make such a difference to the finished piece. And for these details, as you can see, I'm using a liner brush. I'm going to be using a couple of different sizes. You want to make sure that the brush strokes you're creating are not all the same. Look at how much variation I've got here with how they travel, how they overlap. There are many areas here where they're weaved in between other details and that's all in how you layer. This part of the painting would be particularly challenging. This is certainly one of those elements where you'd look at the reference photo and think, where do I start? But by breaking it into individual layers, like how I mentioned in all of my tutorials, it makes it far easier to tackle. So the details that I'm working on here that overlap the background, imagine if I painted my subject first, I'd have to then paint in between all of these tiny little hairs, all of making all of those little blue gaps. So the painting of the background first can really help, especially when you're working on something here where you've got so many of those details that do overlap that background. So these tiny details that I'm adding here, I'm only adding them now because I know that the thing that is behind it is finished. And I speak about that a lot as well in the tutorials, both on Patreon and here on YouTube. If you've got an area of fur that's overlapping another, make sure that you get that area underneath so that is being overlapped painted first. The reason being, you're going to then have to paint around those details or if you paint over them, you're going to have to then re-add those details later on. So it's always better to think one step ahead, what bit do you need to paint first on something like this where you do have so many of these hairs overlapping various other elements. So I recently uploaded a video to YouTube on how to blend with acrylics and also the top tips for painting fur. I'll link both of those in the description below.
So for blending the base layers of the nose here to get this really smooth look, I used my Fine Mist Sprayer Bottle. Now what that does, as the name would suggest, is it puts a fine layer of water over the top of the painting and helps to keep that layer of paint wet. Now in theory, as long as you make sure you keep applying that layer of water, that paint wouldn't necessarily dry at all. You could then blend very similar to how you can with oils. But once you've got that blended look, you can then wait for that water and that paint to dry and then you can then start on with your next layer. So acrylics really are so versatile. You can create that oil painterly look with the fine mist sprayer bottle, but then use the advantages of the fast drying time to get that painting done more and um, more sort of efficiently over that time. It's, it's not always a, an ideal situation to wait a week between layers. And what I did for this is my base layers here, as you've seen, were done with the makeup blending brush. You can see that coming in and out of the view here with that fine mist sprayer bottle. But then I went over the top with my airbrush and you'll get to that bit in a few minutes. The reason being is I wanted to cover both options in this tutorial because I know some members have an airbrush and they'd like to know how to create that soft look. So that's why for this, I did both options. But you really don't have to. If you did this with an airbrush, you would then go straight on top with your brush details. If you don't have an airbrush, you would follow along to the first steps, like what you can see here, blending that out with your makeup brush and the fine mist sprayer bottle. And this kind of nose, being how pink it is, is going to be very similar. The techniques would be almost the same for blending skin. So if you're also looking at doing people portraits in acrylics, these kinds of blending techniques would work with that as well. For a nose like this, you really don't have to be putting in all of those details because it is such a smooth surface. So as I mentioned here, you can see the airbrush section. I'm just going in, adding my highlights and my shadows. The one biggest tip that I will say though, when you are trying to add details like this is get a thinner airbrush paint. I recently did a red panda tutorial, which I'll link in the description below. I've got a YouTube version for that as well. And I used a thicker paint for that. And the detail process with that airbrush was a real headache. It was far more challenging than it should have been. So for this painting, knowing that I was going to use it, I invested in some thinner and um, airbrush paints. And the brand that I chose was the Golden's High Flow Acrylics. Now, as I've only used them once for this painting, but my initial reactions to that is they are so much better than the thicker paint that I was using previously. Now, the brand that I was using before was Createx, and I'm still going to use those for my backgrounds because I do like that paint. I will still keep using them, but I'm going to switch between the two brands. I'm certainly going to be using my Golden's High Flow Acrylics for the details here. I didn't have nowhere near as amount of issues with clogging at all with that airbrush, because I'm using my finer needle for these details, that thinner paint, more of like an ink consistency, is certainly more useful and certainly really beneficial to this kind of process with the airbrush. Okay, so one thing I want to mention is the whiskers. I usually say leave those till the very end. Now, I knew that I was finished with the nose, so I wanted to make sure that I put them in so that I didn't forget them. I, I almost did that once and I never made that mistake again. I photographed a portrait, realised I hadn't added the whiskers and I had to obviously add those in and then re-photograph it. You always want to make sure that you add them in because they make such a difference, but you want to add them in at the right time. If you add them in too soon and then you realise the layer underneath is not quite finished, you're going to have to paint around the whiskers and that makes it so much harder. So leave the whiskers until the very end. Or at least until you know that the area where the whiskers overlap is completely finished. And then the very last bit of this painting was the mane. Now here where you can see I'm adding more of these lighter burnt umber colours, you can see that larger makeup brush. That's because I'm using that same wet on wet blending technique with that fine mist sprayer bottle. You can see it creates a really nice soft layer, but there is a bit of a, a fine balance and an experimentation process there to find the right amount of water that you need to add to get that nice soft blending. If you add too much water, it's just going to completely lift up. You're not going to get that soft blended look. If you don't add it enough, the paint isn't really going to blend at all and nothing really will happen. So it's a bit of a fine balance. The biggest tip that I can say though when you are using a fine mist sprayer is don't hold it too close to that surface. If you do hold it too close to that surface, it's going to just run completely down that, that canvas. Keep it about a foot and a half, two feet away and that will help to make sure that you only apply a very light layer. So I hope the tips and techniques that I've shown in this video are useful. If they were, I'd really appreciate it if you could give the video a thumbs up because it really does help. 
and if you'd like to get notified of future content hit the subscribe and the bell button and as I've mentioned in the video if my slower tutorials are of interest I'll link that in the description below. I also have a Patreon library on my website so you can take a look at the list of tutorials that I've got available over there on both of the tiers. So I've got a pastel tier, an acrylic tier or a combined tier. So those of you who like to use both mediums you can then select that tier. But all of the tutorials are listed there so you can get a bit of an idea of the content that's there before you join. And if you've got any questions about anything art related, anything about Patreon or, or so on, pop them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer them. And I'm going to be uploading another video to YouTube very soon.